Josh will be leading the song tonight, starting next week. Man. Good for him. I mean, he's not here. Maybe you can fill in, Kelly. Hopefully, if I do my book back. <laughs> <laughs> Any other announcements? Anybody with a prayer request? Um. Remember um, uh, our grandson Wilson and our daughter-in-law Emily. They're they've both been really sick this week, and um, so just keep them in your prayers. Uh, I'd like you all to pray for my dad. He had surgery on his uh, foot. He's worried about Adrian. Praying for Harley and for Robin mm-hmm. and Alan and Linda. and Linda. Anybody else? Josh, we we go to pray. Attempt to a song a cappella here. So I ain't sang it a while, so sing along with me. It's an old song. Shackled by a heavy burden, neath the load of guilt and stain, then the hand of Jesus touched me.
patient came to came into my office well a counselor brought her into my office and she was at her wit's end very suicidal she had uh, of course got a hold of some fentanyl and the courts tested her and uh, they took her children away from her and she was devastated and you know to start there I, I just looked at her and said you know basically it's like you have to realize that each one of us is a miracle from God. Mm-hmm. Each one of us are different, but we're made it, you know, to His liking. I said, once you realize that, you can start loving yourself again. And once you do that, we, then we can worry about getting your children back. Mm-hmm. And just to see her emotion, you know, I mean, she she come, she lost it, counselor lost it, and you know. Probably words she never heard before. Right. And just, you know, for him to bless me to say those words mm-hmm. to her, mm-hmm. you know, I just, it, it was just an awesome feeling. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, I think it's just like uh, when me and the child was in that song of Nathan Creek, like the woman with the issue of blood, and Jesus was going through a crowd of people, and people were touching him everywhere but yet a woman reached out and touched the hem of his garment and he stopped and he steps and he turns around and he says who touched me right and his disciples were looking at him you know jesus there's so many people touching me what what do you mean and he said no someone touched me and i felt it leaving meaning that miracle that, that blessing. And so when he turned around and the woman was on the ground and she was looking at him like, I'm with, you know, and then she said, I'm made whole. Every person is different. And even though there's ev- all of these people in the world that are that are struggling and having issues, he knows when that one touches him. Right. Mm-hmm. Amen. And that's what's amazing to me. And that's what my God truly is, is someone who recognizes you out of millions of people and says, I'm going to keep you. I'm going to bless you today. And I just think that that's amazing. Amen. 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 I want to give all honor and glory to God. Uh, And Robin can testify to this, that since I've retired, I've been the world's laziest (laughs) and least energetic person in the world. (laughs) But, uh, you know, since she's been sick and stuff, uh, you know, I've had to do a lot. I've had to step up, you know, and do a lot of things that, you know, I didn't normally do, you know, that I didn't know how to do. And, uh, you know, without the grace of God, I wouldn't be able to do those things. You know, he, you know, with, uh, you know, my sciatica and my back, you know, bad back and all the, you know, health issues that I have, I wouldn't be able to do these things except for the grace of God. And I just want to give him glory and thanks for that. And whether my wife, my wife would uh, debate you on that, she she would say that you and I are in competition of being the latest person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Anybody else with a testimony or a song? You know, Alan, in the Old Testament, <clears throat> the elders, which were the men at the time, they would um, 
find themselves on the wall. They put themselves on the wall and they would basically chew the fat all day and talk, you know, amongst themselves while the women did all the work. Mm -hmm. What you found out is that women do the work back at the house. You couldn't wait till you get back on that wall again. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back on the wall. <laughs> couldn't wait. Couldn't wait to take your place back with the elders and yeah, uh, yeah. sit and do nothing all day, right? <clears throat> All right. Anybody I'm else? I'm missing an awful lot of gun <laughs> Well, they ain't changed over the last 50 years. I promise you. No, I've probably seen them before. <laughs> Anybody else? We will have a uh, business meeting after the service this morning. Uh, it's an open business meeting. You don't have to be a member here, which I think everybody here is a member, but um, you don't have to be a member to stay or whatever, but uh, we will close this service out and go into that um, so that we'll be closed out and you'll be able to leave if you feel, feel that you need to. Um, just a couple of things we need to discuss and go over and uh, catch up, I guess, more or less over the last few months. So we will do that right after this service. Uh, turn your Bibles, please, to the book of John, chapter 8. John, in chapter 8. <clears throat> You know, what we've been hearing this morning is through the testimonies is that God watches over us. He keeps us. And from what I hear, those that stood and testified, <clears throat> you convinced me that you believe it. You know, there's something about truth when we come to realize it, when we come to understand it. Truth in the days that you and I live has become more of an option than, than the right thing to do, I guess, is a, is a good way to put it. Um, I've been told that there are no absolute truths. That's a, that's a popular college thing that they try to teach you in college, that there's no absolute truths in the world you make up your own truth you make up your own way of doing things and it's a philosophy that the world kind of attached itself to i'm amazed that many of the um the eastern cultures that we've taken on in our world today that they don't even realize that that's what they've done and that's satan's way of infiltrating our our country our lives and who we are um uh, most people, they attach themselves to the Buddhists and the Hindus and this and that. And if you say that to them, they go, oh, no, no, I'm Christian. Well, you don't understand the values and views you're telling me are Hindus and Buddhists and these, uh, these Eastern cultures and these Eastern religions. Um, you know, karma, mm -hmm. that's Buddhist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and when people say, uh, and I hear people say, uh, I've heard people say it on Facebook and this and that, well, karma caught up with them. No. Nope. Um, so you're saying you're a Buddhist now, right? No, no, no. It's karma. No. Look it up. Right. Um, there's no such thing as karma. So uh, don't be caught as a Christian saying those, I'll just say this, those stupidity things that people, that people try to attach themselves to. In other words, like I said, from what I hear, everybody kind of believes that I, you've convinced me anyway that what the things you stood up said, I believe that you believe them. You believe them to be truth. That's something that we have today that the world don't have. The way it's available, it's out there. It's not. It's not hidden. Nothing that God did, nothing that Christ did while He was here was was done in a corner. He did everything out in the open. And all the truth that he preached and all the truth that his disciples preached, all the truth that we preach today is not hidden in a corner somewhere. We're not trying to hide it from anybody. The truth is there for the taking. <clears throat> Christ, here in chapter 8, we'll start reading at verse 25. He says these words, Then said they unto him, Who art thou? Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, 
and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be of Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son, of, the son abideth forever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall, be, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Both we have something today that we just maybe may sound maybe a little elementary this morning, but and I even questioned that I was even reading the right scriptures until I heard people testifying and the Holy Spirit confirmed it. So that's okay. I'm glad, I'm glad of that. But if we have something today that the world is looking for, mm -hmm. yeah. we've all been to carnivals and things that where you walk in, they have trick mirrors. In other words, you walk in and they're S-shaped and they make you look big on the bottom, small on top. They even got filters on phones now that do, do crazy things, you know. And we, you, if you did, let's just bring it to the modern age. You do that on your phone or whatever and you send that to last week, um, my little Ann put me on a conference call with I forget how many people was on it. I don't even know now. It was all my relatives. And uh, we started going through all these filters. And I had the skeleton head. And I put mine on there. Well, all of them went to the skeleton head. So we all we all look like skeleton heads on our phones. <laughs> and little Ann just took a snapshot of it and, of course, sent it to all of us. And we all kind of laughed about it. Guess what? That wasn't us. <laughs> that sounds what? Well, of course it ain't. You know, you don't have a skeleton for a head. But you know what? We listen to the world as though we believe everything we, we hear. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, without Christ, we're very well capable of, of believing everything that we hear. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but when I do watch TV and do watch the news, I watch it with the truth of the Word of God on my side. I, I'm glad I do that. Because if I did not do that, oh, it's hard to tell. I'd be pulling my hair out and running down the street and going, what in the world going on here in the world today? But with the truth of the word of God on my side, I watch the, what I watch and I see it and I'm able to pick out those things which are the truth and which are those things which are the lies. We have that ability. As children of God. Christ is trying to explain to the Jews here. That he is truth. Everything that I say is truth. And they came back and said. Well we're. You know, and, when he, and he said. If you, if you believe me then you'll be set free. We mean be set free. We're the children of Abraham. We've never been under bondage. We've never. Since, 
Since, since, we let, since we left Babylon, we've been free people. Are you kidding me? And yet, they were under Roman rule at the time. But, but we won't get into all that. They said, we've been free. We are free people. We're, we're one of God's. And he says to them, whosoever commit a sin is the servant of sin. In other words, whoever, if you ever commit a sin, you're under the bondage of sin. And he was here to obliterate that. He was here to take that philosophy and say, you know what? I am the truth. If you believe me, then you will no longer be under bondage of sin. Well, that does not mean that we don't make mistakes. That don't mean that we don't sin in some way, either, either deed or thought. That means that the grace of God is covering my sins, and when I do sin, I realize it. And I know that I'm not under that bondage. I can say, God, I know that I've made a mistake and move on. The world does not like truth. Like the lazy housekeeper that sweeps the middle of the floor. But when the sun came in into the corners, it showed all the dirt in the corners. And she cursed the sun. Because if it wasn't for that nasty sun, then you wouldn't see how dirty things was. That's what this is. This is the sun. This is what brings a light to us. It brings a light to what we know to be true. So we can walk this world today and we can say, you know what? I don't really know what to believe or what to, what to accept or what to go from, where to go from here. Pick up the word of God and God will guide you in the direction that you need to go. He will give you the truth. Amen. The truth is here. Folks, we live in a world today that, and you, you may get tired of hearing this, but until it hits home with each one of us, then I guess God will just keep laying on my heart. We are pilgrims in this world. This is not, we're not to feel at home here. So we're passing through, Bobby, that's right. We're just going from point A to point B. Where's point B? It's not 282 County Road 7A in Ironton, Ohio. Yes, That's where I get to stay until God called me to my home. Yes, until we get that drilled in our minds, then the truth will evade us every day and we will be miserable people. Mm -hmm. God is, Christ is trying to get across to these people. Is that, you know, Pilate asked Christ when he, when, he was, when he was questioning him. He said, what is truth to Jesus? What is truth? In, in John chapter 18, a few chapters later, you know, what, what is truth? You know, I've always thought of that statement that he asked because Pilate was like the world today. He was looking. He's trying to find what the truth was. That was an honest question by Paul. That wasn't sarcasm. That wasn't trying to trick Christ. If you read the story of Pilate, I believe that man was looking for truth. And he said, what is truth? And the truth, the very truth, was standing right in front of him. And Christ said to him, I'm a witness unto the truth. He said, you know what? My father, which is in heaven, he's the truth. My words are the truth. Why are my words the truth? Because I speak the words of the Father. I can say today that when I stand behind this pulpit, I'm preaching the word of God, which is the truth. The moment that I don't, the moment that I go into the world and say, you tell me what to preach, then throw me out of the pulpit and don't ever let me back in. Because the truth today is like those trick mirrors. They would destroy it, they would distort and make us look make the truth look as though it's something else. That when the fact is, the truth is what the word of God says that it is. Absolutely. The word of God is absolute. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Once the truth is realized, what do you do with it? Share it. 
share it for sure. Back in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, another very familiar scripture. Verse 26, or chapter 26 and verse 50. Christ says these words to Judas Iscariot. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Very simple words, very simple question. Oh, it wasn't that Christ didn't know why he was there. It wasn't that Christ was, was oblivious to what was happening behind his back, what they thought behind his back. He wanted Judas to scare it to understand something. Number one, that I'm your friend. And that what you've done was already prophesied. Mm -hmm. You've not done anything that we didn't know he was going to do. My father and I would know exactly what was going to happen. Right. But when the truth was laid out in front of Judas, he had to answer the question that Christ asked. Wherefore art thou come, Judas? Why, why did you come here? <laughs> you know, there's something about the word of God that when we don't back down from it, I've never convicted anybody. Never. It ain't the style of preaching that convicts. It ain't the hicks and the hacks and the spitting and the sputtering. Whether it's simple teaching message or it's a preaching message, whether I get excited, whether I don't get excited, I've never one time ever convicted anybody of their sins, but the Word of God has. Amen. Amen. When Christ looked at said, Judas, why did you come here? And at that moment, Judas had to answer for himself why he came there. When the truth was settled in the minds of Judas, he knew at that moment what he'd done was wrong. You see, all the truth that Judas knew prior to that was, was money. Power. The hold the money back. Make sure that I'm in control of this and I'm in control of that and I will take the 30 pieces of silver and I will give you, I will hand Christ over to you because I will have money and money will equal power to me. You see, that's the truth that the world wants you to hear. The more stuff you have, the more power you've got. The more, the bigger house you own, the more power you have. The more bigger bank account that you have, the better job that you have, the more power you have. But when it comes right down to it, some of the poorest people in the world is people like Bill Gates, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, Rockefeller was not a Christian. Mm -hmm. The story was told one time of him sitting in a restaurant, looking over at one of the servants of this restaurant who had this big steak sit down in front of him and he was eating and he was you could tell he was enjoying every every bite you see jay rockefeller wasn't able to eat that kind of thing because his heartburn was so bad that it would kill him if he ate something like that because of all the stress that he had in his whole life and he walked over to that young man he said are you enjoying that steak and he said yes he said i would give anything to be able to enjoy that the way you enjoy that but because of my life i'm not able to you see, we may not have the greatest of everything there is to have. If God's blessed, God's blessed me with a, with a wonderful job, a love, my wonderful family. These are all things great, well, and fine. But you know what? Those are, not, those are not the true blessings of God. They are true blessings of God, but my true blessing is my salvation. Mm -hmm. That I can lay down at night and know that I'm going to heaven when this life is over. If I never wake up again. So Judas had to answer that question. And he answered it. 
we don't particularly read verbally what he said to Christ, but it was, it was internally answered. And as he received that money, he verbally told the elders that gave him the money in Matthew 27, verse 4, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. The Bible says that he went out and hanged himself. I've often said about Judas, did that mean that what happened to him that he nullified himself of grace? <laughs> he just didn't take it. He said, wait a minute, he betrayed the very Son of God. He deserved hell. He deserved the deepest parts of hell. What has he done that's any different than you and I done before we were saved? How many times did you take the name of God in vain? How many times did you do the things that you knew that God would not, was not proud of you or God, God would not approve of you doing? And yet you did them anyway. That's why, folks, that's why every single day we should bow our heads and thank God for the grace mm. that he provides each one of us. Because without it, there ain't one of us. It, without grace, every single one of us would split hell wide open. Mm -hmm. I don't care how good we are. I don't care how well we talk. I don't care how we preach. I don't care how well we sing. I don't care how well we witness. Mm -hmm. Without the grace of God, none of us have a chance to make it to heaven. Amen. The truth truth this world does not want to hear is the truth that you and I what Christ was saying here is look, look the truth is what I'm going to tell you it is because in the world you live Jews they're not going to accept the truth they're going to hang the truth from a tree here, here before too long that you have the truth in you if you listen to my words and you do my words he was telling them then the truth will be in you. Folks, we, ha we have what, I'll say it again, we have what the world is looking for. That drunkard out on the street, we have what they're looking for. That rich person that thinks they own everything, we have what they're missing. We have the truth of God. And we as all people should be proud of what we have, not proud of ourselves, but I'm very proud of what Jesus has done for me. But we walk around this world as if, as if we don't have anything to offer this world. And yet we've got the only thing this world that will save this world. So once we receive the truth, you have to answer for the truth. There are unsaved people that will be under the sound of our voices when we speak the truth. And they will no longer be able to say, I didn't know. They're no longer be able to say they don't know what the truth is anymore. They may choose not to listen to the truth. You know, I, sometimes I listen to these YouTube shorts of, I'll just say, people of like beliefs, Christian people. And I love to, this one in particular, I love to listen to. He, He's, he's quick, quick with it, and he debate. He goes. He debates people. Goes on debates with, with colleges, and goes on debates with with people that I mean, they're just hammering. And he just flat. I mean, he just quick. I just think, God, I wish you'd give me that quick wit, quick wit like that. But you know what? That's what God's given, and that's what He's calling us to do. And you know what? What I love about it, He don't back down. You know why He don't back down? And He says this. You know what? I've got the truth. I heard him say that the other day on one of them things. He said, he said you know what? You can believe what you can believe me or choose not to believe me, but I, I've got the truth. Mm -hmm. No matter what he's saying, it's what we say every day, what we say every week. You can choose not to believe. That's your choice. That's your free will to say yes, God, or no, God. But you can no longer say, I didn't know. Because the truth has been told. Without Christ, we have no hope. 
And it's your choice what you do with it. It's our choice what we choose to do with the truth that we have received as his people. We can sit in our pews and sit in our homes and never do anything with it. Or we can say, God, what do you need me to do? Because I know that I've got something to give this world. There's too many people, too many Christians, they feel as though they have nothing to offer. Too many churches today are filled with pews of pews and pews of people that think, well, I have nothing to offer this world. I'll just come and worship and I'll go home. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a Greek word for that. Hogwash. <laughs> we all have something to offer. We all got something. If not, say it again, God will just knock us, knock us on the head and take us home. Yeah. But if he allows me to wake up tomorrow morning, then he's got something for me to do. He's got truth for me to tell. And we've got a world that wants to hear what we've got to say. They may not, they may not admit that. But when the truth is in them, they, can, they cannot deny it. Father in heaven, we bow you head this morning. We thank you, God, for watching over and keeping us through this week, through this day, through this service, God. We thank you for the testimonies. God, the truth that's been put out by the mouths of your people. And they believe what they what they said. And I believe that they believe what they said. And it blesses my heart that they believe the same things I do. Because your name is glorified. Your son is lifted up. And we have the truth. Not only in our hands that we carry, but we have the truth in our hearts. And this world needs to hear the truth that's in there. Help each one of us, God, to realize and understand that we have the one thing this world is looking for. Despite all the problems this world has, all the conflicts that's going on, all the mis <laughs> mistruth that's going on out there, and it don't take long to realize this world is in the shape that it's in because... Of the lies that's been told throughout time. And yet we. As your people. Possess the one thing. That will fix it all. And that's your word. We are the most powerful people. On this earth. And yet we don't give ourselves credit. Because we think it's us. That's doing it. But God in truth. It's your son, your spirit that lives inside of us that is doing the work. Help us, God, to be your feet. Help us to be your hands. Help us to be your mouths to speak to the truth to those that will listen and those that will accept and to those that won't. As the disciples did in the Old Testament, the apostles, they went, went to towns to preach the gospel. Paul said, just shake the dirt off your feet and move on. Help us, God, to do your will in our life. And help us to be your servants. And it's your son, Christ's name, pray, we pray and ask these things. And amen. amen. All right. Come back Wednesday. Uh, for what we uh, got, what was, um, 